This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Jeff, we really appreciate you making time for us. Let's start with the guys that are on campus last night. And I think of as this morning, Boogie Flan, Billy Richmond. I don't, I don't know if they're friends. I know they were a part of that Kentucky recruiting class initially. What can you tell us about the two highly recruited players that are here in Fayetteville? Yeah, I don't know if I would. I don't know if they're friends, but I mean, they every elite player kind of runs in the same circles. I mean, they played on the same AAU circuit together. Um, they both played on the Nike circuit. They both played in the Jordan Brand Classic. Obviously, as you said, they're both committed to Kentucky, so they're familiar with each other. They're both from kind of the New York, New Jersey area, so they they run in the, the same circles very much. And I think Arkansas is in a pretty good spot for both. Um, you know, obviously, they were both committed to Cal at Kentucky, and the schools that. You know, for, for Richmond, it was down to Kentucky and Memphis before it committed to Kentucky. And Memphis doesn't seem to be, you know, all that involved at this point. And then Boogie Fland, it was Kentucky, Indiana, Alabama, and neither of those schools is really in the mix either. And so it, it just feels like both of these guys decommitted and pretty quickly focused on following Cal to Arkansas. And so, you know, as of right now, I, I feel like Arkansas is in a pretty good spot for both players. Now, if they if they leave the visit without committing them, you know, suddenly some questions open up, but uh, it does feel like momentum is is trending in Arkansas's direction with both players. Jeff, Arkansas fans are watching John Calipari recruit closely for maybe the first time. What's the secret? Where's the magic? Give us a sense of what it's like when Cal walks into the gym, um, the, 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 the presence that he has. Yeah, I mean – People turn heads. If he walks into a crowded gym, you kind of know he's there if he walks in. Um, he does have that kind of, uh, I don't know if aura is the right word, but, you know, people, he's got a presence about him on the recruiting trail for sure. And it, it's, it's, it's a, he has a history to back it up. He's produced so many N- NBA players from his time at Kentucky and his time at Memphis. Um, and before the last couple of years, he had the college basketball success to match. And so it was a pretty foolproof argument for him or uh, foolproof pitch uh, on the recruiting trail. Hey, come here. You could win 25, 30 games. You could win NCAA tournament games, and then you could be a lottery pick. It's, it's hard to turn that down in Kentucky and Duke for about, I mean, Kentucky, but you know, Cal by himself pretty much ran the top 10, ran the five star um, rankings for a while. And then it was Kentucky and Duke for several years. And now it's, um, you know, there are other schools that are, that are wading into those top five, top 10 waters, but Cal, even, you know, his final, class of Kentucky before it fell apart was the number two class in the country. And so it, it's clear that despite the downturn on the court over the past couple of years, especially in March, he still has a pretty good pitch. And again, I, I think a lot of it is just the, his history of producing NBA players. And I mean, obviously he's, he's said the number a bunch of times, but it's, you know, however many hundreds of million dollars in NBA contracts from guys that produced that Kentucky produced during his time there. When you look at the elite players uh, that are that are considering schools, um, what's the tipping point? Obviously, NIL has changed the game, but recruiting is still recruiting. You're just recruiting with different inducements now. Um, what do you find to be the tipping point sometimes with his, uh, with these elite players on where they ultimately decide to go? Yeah, I mean, NIL is obviously a huge factor, but for a lot of these guys, it's you know, will I play the role I want? Will I get the shots I want? Will I be able to be there for six months and then leave? Because as we've seen, you know, a couple, even as a couple of the UK guys, you know, DJ Wagner and Aaron Bradshaw, I think at this time a year ago, everyone assumed they'd be in college for six months and then go to the NBA. And they just didn't perform. And I think that's, that's kind of the fear for a lot of these top five, top ten kids, especially in the the transfer portal age where it's hey we want to play 22 23 year olds over 18 year old freshmen and i think that doesn't just go for cal i think that goes for the rest of the country it's just harder for a 18 year old 19 year old to make a huge impact right off the bat i mean we saw you know reed shepherd did it and rob dillingham did it and it but it's it's far fewer than there used to be where you know the lottery picks of the nba draft would be just be you know, eight freshmen and a couple of international kids and very few older guys, uh, college players. And now we're seeing the Dalton connects to the world, the Zach Eadies of the world stay in college for three or four years and get drafted highly. And I think a lot of that is because freshmen just aren't making the impact they used to. So I think that's the biggest thing now. I mean, NIL obviously is a huge factor, like you said, like I said, but 
I think a lot of these freshmen are, or, you know, high level recruits are making sure that they're going to a place where they can play their role from day one and succeed in five or six months. We're talking a little college basketball that's more to Arkansas basketball. Jeff Borzello, ESPN, does a lot of college basketball content for them. You mentioned DJ Wagner, Jeff. What, what's the latest on him? He's one of the guys Arkansas fans are really intrigued by. Yeah, it's been quiet. Um, you know, I think Arkansas is, is a possibility. I think Louisville is in the mix. Obviously, they recruited him before he committed to Kentucky. And I do feel like he's been, I don't know, maybe a little bit unfairly uh, evaluated after his freshman year. I mean, he even though he wasn't the number one or number two player like he was throughout much of his high school career, I mean, he still averaged 10 points and four assists on a top 10 team, and he started 28 games for them. And so it feels like people are writing him off as as kind of a bust, even though for a lot of freshmen, like I just said, a lot of these guys aren't producing like they used to. I I think that he's still a guy where if he lands in the right spot, whether that's Arkansas or somewhere else, I think he's still a, a... incredibly talented, dynamic shot maker, playmaker that, you know, with another year under his belt could still be a a future first round pick. So what about uh, Jaden Quaidens? I know that you've reported on him. He he seems to have uh, pushed Arkansas out of his list, Louisville, Memphis, some schools. Why why has he decided that Arkansas is no longer a candidate for him? Yeah, that was just kind of a strange one. Um, It seemed like once he decommitted, it seemed like it was, um, and he was likely to just follow Cal to Arkansas. And then Louisville got in the mix, and it seemed from people that I spoke to, it was that it was probably going to be Louisville or Arkansas. And then suddenly other schools are entering the mix, and Kentucky's trying to make a pitch, and Memphis is getting him on a visit. And so it, it just it seemed to just kind of take a few twists and turns that were unexpected. And it, it did feel um, maybe not a coincidence that Kentucky and Arkansas basically were, were dropped out of his recruitment on the same day. Um, and it, it's kind of unclear as to what really happened, but it's just, it's evident that, you know, Memphis and Louisville are sort of the, the two schools in the mix for him going forward. Help us on some other transfers. John L. Davis is the popular name right now with hog fans, uh, as is Jonas Adu. Is there a legitimate conversation that they could both wind or one of them winds up in Fayetteville? I think they both can. I mean, I think Arkansas is the favorite for Janelle Davis right now. Um, I know other schools are trying to get in the mix, but it, it seems over the past probably week and a half now where Arkansas has has emerged as the favorite in the driver's seat um, for him. There was always questions whether he would follow Dusty May to Michigan. Um, it, it never seemed like he was as likely as, as perceived. And, our, I mean, he's the best available guard in the portal, probably the best available player in the portal at this point. Um, and, I mean, he's... He would, I think, thrive in, in, in sort of Cal's system if he did not end up at Arkansas. I do think they're the favorite. Adu, he's another guy. I mean, he's he's a top ten transfer right now. One of the best front court players. He's a, a plug and play. You know, he can make it. You know, he's experienced in the SEC. He was one of the best defensive players in the league. Third team, I believe, all conference mm-hmm. or second team all conference. And so, if they get both, I mean, that's just two anchors um, for them. And, and they're, they're going to get other guys too. But um, it it seems like you know, that they are certainly in the driver's seat for Janelle Davis, and I think they're in a pretty good position for Jonas Adu also. Jeff Borzello is our guest, ESPN College basketball analyst and writer. Jeff, what about a former Razorback? I say former. He technically hadn't left yet. Caleb Battle, he's in Dallas-Fort Worth yesterday with TCU. I think he has a K-State visit. Is there any indication that he could still wind up in Fayetteville? I mean, I think there's a chance. I mean, he's, he, meant, he visited TCU. He's visiting Kansas State. I think Seton Hall might try to get involved and, and bring him back closer to home. The question with him, I mean, he's going to be a guy that, as you guys all know, he's going to want his shots. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's wanted his shots at every stop dating back to high school. And so if you, if you start throwing guys in the mix where it's you get Janelle Davis, you get Billy Richmond, you get Boogie Flynn, you have Carter Knox already, suddenly the, the available shots are just they're dwindling. And – um, he's not the type of guy who's going to going to play 12 minutes and then come sit on the bench. He's a guy that, you know, as we saw toward the toward the stretch of down down the stretch of the season, when he's able to kind of flow and 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 play with you know, and be kind of the focal point of the offense, he's at his best. And that's just not going to happen if they end up getting all these guys. So I think the the door is open for him to come back. But I, I think that there are probably more opportunities for him to, um, you know, be a, a number one or number two option at a TCU or a Kansas State or a Seton Hall or wherever he ends up going. We're, we're talking about guys that would help this team next year, but 
for the future, let's stay here in Arkansas. Y'all just came out with your top 100 rankings for both the class of 25 and 26. A couple of Arkansas guys on there. You got Isaiah Seeley of Springdale. You got Terry on Burgess of Benton. Uh, Deshaun Andrews, Sean Andrews' son, is on there. It's number 13 in the class of 2026. Uh, Jeff, I know you got to keep your, your tabs on a bunch of recruits, but wh- what can you tell us about some of these in-state kids that may have a, a desire to play for Arkansas in the future? Well, I think there are two kind of big variables we're going to have to watch with what Cal does in terms of in-state recruits. I mean, one is that it's it's historically been really hard to get kids out of the state for other schools to beat Arkansas for in-state kids. I mean, I know the stat that I always kind of cite is once Malik Monk committed to Kentucky, there was a six-year stretch, I think, from 16 to 22, where not a single top 100 kid left the state mm-hmm. to go to school elsewhere. I mean, kids just want to stay home. But the other factor is what Cal does with his roster construction. I mean, that's, that was the biggest key after they lost to Oakland. Everyone's questioning how he's building his rosters nowadays. Does he go away from getting huge number one, number two recruiting classes with six, seven guys, or does he start going more toward the portal? And does he want to say, hey, I'm going to keep recruiting like I did at Kentucky where I'm just going to go after five stars and call it a day? Um, you know, Andrews is, is going to be a can't-miss prospect for whoever wants to get a national prospect. I watched him last spring, and he's just more physically advanced, more physically developed than, than most of his peers. I mean, just the way he runs the floor, the way he finishes, the way he just kind of glides in the half court to the basket, he's going to be a guy that I would imagine Cal will prioritize. In it. He probably could have done that at Kentucky, too. Um, the rest of them, and, and Kellen Robinson was another one in the 25 no classes mm-hmm. inside the state. Um, I think it's going to kind of depend on how they develop. I mean, I, I think at least the first two um, will be SEC recruits. And so it, it wouldn't be a surprise to see Arkansas get in the mix. I think Kellen Robinson might end up being maybe just a notch below what Arkansas is trying to build under Cal. But I think it's going to really depend on how they progress over the next couple of months and, and what Cal wants to do with, I mean, he's, he's, is not going to focus on the 25 class for several weeks now. I mean, he's got what two guys on the roster right now. Um, so he can't really turn his head toward future classes just yet. And so I think it's going to depend on, on what they do in kind of the big events in May and June and July to see what Arkansas really does with this 25 class. Bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.